Hello, today I'm going to show you how to get your friends and family's password and account information if they're using a computer in the same building as you and are on the same network and are not using a secure connection using a program called Wireshark. You can download Wireshark from wireshark.org as of 2019 and it is totally free. In this video, we will be learning about how to perform a hacking attack called network sniffing or sniffing. Basically, what this means is to look at the data sent between computers by the applications and processes running on those computers and derive meaningful information that was not meant for us to see. Oftentimes, information sent behind the scenes is not as secure while it's secure on the front end. So that means we won't be able to see it when we're going through the browser. But if we look at the network wire and look at the data that's passed along it, we'll be able to get information and use it to uh, get personal information about other people. So yeah, get ready for it and we will start in a second. Welcome back. So now I'm going to show you how to use Wireshark which is a network sniffing tool in order to monitor and get the passwords of other people who are not using a secure connection on your network. So I just opened Wireshark Network Analyzer and it's loading the interfaces I have on my computer. Currently I'm connected to the internet over Wi-Fi. Uh, so I will click on the Wi-Fi interface and as you can see data is being submitted over it. So I clicked on it. And so now I'm seeing all the information being sent over my network. But that's too much for me. So I'm going to say I only want to see, um, I'm going to use this filter box in order to specify that I only want to see HTTP requests and HTTP2 for now. Okay, so we got that. So now what we were seeing before if we go back to the previous unfiltered packets, um, was all the data being sent. So if we were to click on one of those uh, rows, we would get the details of it. And see, we can see the actual um, hexadecimal data, which is basically like machine language of the packet, um, and all the actual headers uh, that a packet would have. I won't go into what that means, but that's basically the details of the data sent over the network. This is a unit of communication for the actual uh, that the actual computer uses that you don't see. It's much more complex than you would see, think, right? So now we filtered it on HTTP and HTTP2. Uh, protocols, which is the language of the internet. So whenever you go to a website, it's using uh, either this or SSL. But SSL is secure, so we're only looking at insecure. So now we're going to look for insecure, insecure login. And boom, I found this website, stealmylogin.com, which gives us an example. So now I'm going to go and read through this, and I see that they actually have a demo site set up. Okay, so now let's take a look at this code. Because right now, if we actually look, it says not secure. But we also want to make sure that the information being sent is to an insecure site. So I'm going to actually look at the source code with Chrome debug tools. And I see, oh, there we go. It's actually sent to a um, secure uh, website. So that won't pick up unless we do some extra stuff. But uh, I'm not going to explain the extra stuff yet uh, in this video. So now I'm going to set it to that. And uh, so now it's sending to an insecure website as well. So both ends of the communication is insecure. And if we go back to Wireshark, we see that um, each request we made while looking, surfing the web actually sent a packet of information. And this is the website data. So this is what is the raw format of what is displayed over here. So now let's enter in a password and a username. So secret 
password and I'll click login. So it says stealing your login info, the username is DDDD and the secret password is secret password. And I click OK and it says now secure submitting the form. So OK, it submitted the form and that's in the browser. However, if we go over here to our actual Wireshark uh, application, we will see that if we go and look through the packets and the information in the packets, we should be able to find the username and password that was passed. Okay, so here it is. That packet, line-based text data. No, that's not it. How about this one? HTML form encoded URL. And boom, we have the username over there and the password over there. So if we specified someone else's IP here, I believe it would be... Uh, so IP is a unique identifier for every computer on a network. So if you were to specify their IP here, you should be able to get all the that data that they pass over the network if your modem is running in a particular mode uh, without them realizing it, if they're using an insecure connection. Prior to 1994, all actual compu uh, computers didn't have security when they were going to a website. So HTTPS didn't exist, as well as FTP, uh, SFTP. So that means that if you knew about this back then, you would be able to get all their information without them knowing. So in this way, you can get the usernames and passwords of users on your network that are not protecting themselves with something like VPN or a secure connection. Security these days is getting more important as the net the average level of knowledge of the average internet user is increasing exponentially. Um, the What protected people in the past was ignorance of how stuff worked. But now that people know, that's no longer there. So they've been improving it. The internet wasn't that secure in the beginnings when it was first built. So if you enjoyed that, leave your comments below on what you think about it or other exploits you'd like covered. I will also post the instructions in... Uh, the, the comment, the details box below. Thank you. And that is all for now. See you next time.